Oh, Australia, are you with us? Come on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, as I was just about to introduce, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a legendary band, Jethro Tull. <laughs> As I did walk my hands to fair, I came upon my mother goose. So I turned her loose while well, she was screaming. And a foreign student said to me, Was it really true? There are elephants and lions too in Piccadilly Circus. Must have been a hundred schoolgirls sobbing into handkerchiefs as one. I don't believe they knew I was a schoolboy. And a pretty lady said to me, if you start your raving and you're misbehaving, You'll be sorry And the chicken fancier came to play With his long red beard And his sister's weird She drives a lorry Piano, we've got uh, Andy Giddings and uh, Martin Barr. Welcome, Hi. one and all. Thank you. Oh, I love that. Yeah. In there, Ian. Especially, especially this time of the morning. <laughs> it is a bit difficult. It yeah. is actually just early afternoon. Um, yeah, maybe yes, you're, you're, you're probably right. still on jet lag. Is that right, Ian? She improvised hastily. Yes, exactly the reason <laughs> that I said that. Yes, it's, it's, it's sometime early in the morning, like the early hours of the morning, where we just came from. Somewhere in the world. Yeah, long journey. Mm. Long way back home from England. Well, welcome. Thank After 27 years of Jethro Tull, Ian, what's the profile of, um, of a Jethro Tull fan? Um... These days, I would say it's pretty much uh, there are two separate generations of people out there because of the folk who grew up with Jethro Tell, who are nearly as old as we are, and then there's a different bunch of folks who are probably 
you know, late teens, early 20s, who, who missed out on all that first time around and are now the, the curious uh, fun seekers coming to see what it was their parents spent all that money and time listening to. <laughs> and they grew up on. And, uh, well, if they weren't hallucinating too badly at the time, <laughs> yes. You do have a lot of fun, and I love the way you play the flute there, which is, you know, synonymous with Jethro Tull. I would never have uh, put flute with uh, a hard rock and roll band, but you beg to differ. Uh, well, I wouldn't either, no. It's a thankless task trying to play a nice little gentle acoustic instrument like that with these very noisy people. Who, who <laughs> but I, I mean, with, some but... of the stuff you do is big rock and roll. Yeah, it's not well... only the sort of acoustic version we've heard today of Jethro Tull. That's Tull. right. Well, the, 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 the term these days, everyone talks about music that is unplugged. Well, that's what I've been doing for 28 years. I'm the unplugged guy who's in a rock and roll band because I would play the, the acoustic instruments, you know, mm -hmm. the acoustic guitar, the mandolin, the flutes, the nice gentle things made of wood and and, uh, you know, folky sort of instruments. Mm. But in the rock context, that's, that's always been the, the style of music people associate with us. And even the generational gap has caught up with you because the flute and your daughter have something in common as well. Um, that they're both very expensive, yes. <laughs> he said, improvising wildly. No, the, uh, yes, my daughter actually started playing flute uh, at school, being obliged to take up some kind of an instrument. So she, uh, she came home and said, Daddy, will you buy me uh, an instrument to play at school? I said, sure, what do you fancy? She said, well, what, what should I play? I said, well, leave out things like cellos and violins, they're really hard. Try a saxophone or a flute, they're kind of easy. Sorry guys over there, but they are. And um, she said, well, you buy me a saxophone. I said, no, but I'll lend you a flute. A cheap <laughs> so, daddy. A cheap daddy. So I polished one up and lent it to her, and then she came back and told me I was doing it all wrong. <laughs> and indeed I was, because I was self-taught, you know, I just kind of figured out where to put my fingers and gave it a shot. And but, she said uh, you'd, you'd done it all wrong. That's correct. So I borrowed her fingering chart and her how to play, you know, how to play the flute book one. <laughs> And went off, went off for about three months and relearned to play the flute. And um, I'm still working on it. That must have been very tough, relearning. It was, yeah. It's a spe yes, exactly. Well, I, start I first picked up the flute when I was 20, so I was a late starter mm. at the flute as well. And um, <laughs> when I then finally graduated just uh, two years ago to try and learn to play it properly, I was, um, at that point, 46 years old, which is kind of late to be starting for a second time. But oh, depends anything on Anything for a laugh. Anything for a laugh. Now, I must make comment um, with this nice little uh, accessory that you have on today, mm. Ian. Uh, this is the, the rock star, 40 plus rock star mm. accessory. Is it? Explain it's... why you have this particular accessory. Well, about eight weeks ago in Lima, Peru, uh, I looked, my lower limbs resembled those of those boys you're going to see in a few minutes. <laughs> and then I had a, a particularly graceful balletic leap that went horribly wrong when, I, when, I, when I landed on a very wobbly stage in, in Peru. And it just threw me slightly sideways and I tore the ligaments in my leg, so I'm, uh, I'm having to make this, uh, this um, scaffolding my, my, my good friend for the next six to eight months, so it's not, not a lot of fun, But because I'm working all the way through to the end of November. Well, this, maybe, uh, is that telling choice. you something? You shouldn't be jumping around on stage working into your 40-year uh, year? Is, not, is that not, what it's telling you now? Not necessarily. You're it's, not going to it, deal with that. What it's really saying is just stay the hell out of Lima, Peru, where they don't build a stage. <laughs> your skiing's out for a little while for you. <laughs> Yeah, and they've told me to give up any thoughts I ever had about being a professional footballer. So. Oh. But there you go. I mean, the rest of the... Four out of five limbs in good working condition, who could complain? Uh, <laughs> they're quick. They're quick. I'll be discreet about it. But, uh, guys, you are touring right around Australia. You've got a new CD. Mm. Tell us about the new CD. Well, the new CD is actually, we recorded about a year ago, and because I had a solo album out last year, which was a, an album for the classical division of uh, EMI Records. Then the Tull album came out, I think, at the end of August, beginning of September, and sort of staggered its way through releases in different countries as we get round to them. So it still ranks, I guess, here as a sort of a new CD, although, you know, it's about six months old mm -hmm. in terms of uh, a release. But uh, first time playing some of those songs here in uh, Australia on this tour. Well, I know Australia to. is looking forward to it. In fact, Jethro Tull is playing uh, Canberra, May, uh, May 11. Also, uh, there's the dates up on your screen. Sydney State Theatre, Brisbane, Melbourne, Adelaide, right around the country. Well, gentlemen, I can only say what a pleasure it is to, uh, to have such a legendary rock band. Ian, uh, Martin and, 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 I'm sorry, Andy. Andy's over there. Sorry, Andy. That's all right. No. You're, and you're one of the originals as well, yes, Martin, aren't yeah. you? Youngster. I've yep. sort of 27 years in the band. 27? Yeah. Frightening, <laughs> but you're still it loving me. it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I love it. Once, once you've the travel's over, it's it's great fun. And you're not leaping on stages with the in um, Peru as well. Well, I'm taking it easy, sort of, you know, spinning out the years, investing in the future. <laughs> exactly. We like it, Jethro Tull, ladies and gentlemen. Please thank our guests. We'll be back with more after.